What if I told you that thousands of years before modern laboratories, brain scanners, and quantum computers, ancient mystics had already mapped the landscape of human consciousness? Deep in the Himalayan mountains, they encoded their discoveries in a text so revolutionary that even today's most brilliant scientists are only beginning to catch up. Quantum entanglement, they knew it. Neuroplasticity, they mastered it. The observer effect, they didn't just study it, they lived it. This isn't science fiction or new age fantasy. This is the Vigyan Pairav Tantra, perhaps humanity's oldest user's manual for hacking reality itself. Imagine being a fly on the wall 5,000 years ago, a secret gathering of masters, whispering voices, the scratching of reed pens on palm leaves. They're recording something so valuable that kings would wage wars to possess it, but they're giving it away for free. This is the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, 112 meditation techniques so potent that they've been called shortcuts to enlightenment. Not just another dusty spiritual text, but a precision toolbox for rewiring human consciousness itself. Break down the name and you unlock its purpose. Vigyan, pure science. Pairav, the ultimate state of consciousness. Tantra, technology or method. Together, the technology of transcendent awareness. But here's the twist. This manual wasn't hidden in secret caves or guarded by silent monks. It was hiding in the most secure vault imaginable, the limits of human comprehension. Like quantum physics before we had the mathematics to describe it, these insights were always there, waiting for our minds to evolve enough to grasp them. The text begins with the ultimate power couple, the goddess Devi and her cosmic partner, Shiva. But this isn't your typical divine dialogue. She cuts straight to the chase with questions that would make even today's top philosophers and physicists break into a cold sweat. Oh Lord, what is your reality? What is this wonder-filled universe? What constitutes seed? Who centers the universal wheel? What is life beyond form, pervading forms? How may we enter it fully above space and time? Stripped of its poetry, she's asking, what is reality? What is consciousness? What the hell is going on here? And how do we experience it directly? Shiva's answer, not philosophy, not theory, but 112 practical techniques, literal consciousness hacks that blow open the doors of perception. Techniques so precise, they read like code for reprogramming human awareness. Stockholm, 2024. A neuroscientist stares at multicolored brain scans. Cambridge. Quantum physicists debate observer effects over coffee, Stanford, psychologists wire up volunteers to measure transcendent states. They're all studying the same thing from different angles, consciousness, and their cutting edge findings. They're rediscovering what those ancient palm leaf manuscripts described thousands of years ago. Is it coincidence? Or have we been sitting on the user manual for human consciousness all along? Let's crack open this ancient code and see how it anticipated today's biggest scientific breakthroughs. Parallel number one, the quantum observer effect, science's greatest mind bender. In quantum labs around the world, physicists face an uncomfortable truth. The mere act of observation changes how particles behave. The boundary between observer and observed, it's an illusion. Reality isn't something out there. It's a dance between consciousness and possibility. Now, listen to verse 23 of the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra. Consider your essence as light rays from center to center up the vertebrae, and so rises livingness in you. This isn't poetic metaphor, it's a precise instruction for experiencing yourself as pure awareness, the observer that shapes reality through perception. These ancient meditators weren't just philosophizing, they were conducting consciousness experiments thousands of years before the double-slit experiment blew physicists' minds. Did they know something we're only beginning to rediscover? Parallel number two, neuroplasticity, your brain on meditation. It was the neuroscience bombshell of the 21st century. 
Your brain isn't hardwired. It's more like modeling clay. Direct your attention consistently, and neural pathways physically reshape themselves. The scientific community was stunned. The ancient yogis, they'd been exploiting this for millennia. Check out verse 55 of the Vigyan Pairav. Focus on fire rising through your form until the body burns to ashes, but not you. Strip away the metaphorical language and what do you have? A precision technique for focused attention that creates measurable changes in neural architecture. When modern meditators perform this technique under fMRI machines, researchers watch in real time as their brains literally rewire themselves. Modern science needed sophisticated scanning technology to discover neuroplasticity. These ancient practitioners needed only their own awareness. They weren't just theorizing about the brain, they were actively reprogramming it. Parallel number three, the breath-brain connection, the body's most underrated superpower. 2019, Stanford researchers published groundbreaking findings on how breath patterns directly hack the autonomic nervous system. Medical journals buzz. Psychiatric protocols update. It's revolutionary. Meanwhile, the Vigyan Pairav dedicates 28 techniques to breath manipulation, including this gem from verse 24. When breath comes in, feel I am. When breath goes out, feel I am not. Modern science now confirms what this ancient text described. The breath is a direct control panel for your nervous system. That alternating rhythm of inhalation and exhalation. It's toggling your sympathetic and parasympathetic systems, something we thought was unconscious until recently. Harvard researchers map how specific breath patterns stimulate the vagus nerve, regulating heart rate, blood pressure, even immune response. These ancient practitioners weren't just meditating, they were conducting sophisticated psychophysiological experiments with their own bodies as laboratories. But how did they know? Without EEGs, without vagus nerve monitors, without cortisol measurements, how did they map these precise connections between breath and consciousness? But these parallels are just the warm-up. The main event the connection that's causing scientific jaws to drop worldwide lies in their understanding of consciousness itself. Today's cutting-edge theories, like integrated information theory championed by neuroscientist Giulio Tononi, propose that consciousness emerges from the integration of information across complex systems. The more integrated the information, the higher the consciousness. Now, look at these ancient techniques. 23 different methods in the Vigyan Pairav specifically target the integration of seemingly separate aspects of experience, sound and silence, movement and stillness, self and other, into unified awareness. They weren't just anticipating today's theories, they were providing a practical manual for manipulating the very mechanisms that modern science is only beginning to identify. But this raises the billion-dollar question that keeps researchers up at night. How? How did ancient meditators, without fMRI machines, without EEGs, without quantum computers, discover insights that our most advanced instruments are only now beginning to validate? What did they know that we're still missing? The answer may not be mystical, but methodological, a radical difference in approach that's hidden in plain sight. Modern science looks outward using technology to observe external phenomena. The tantric approach looks inward, using consciousness to observe itself. One uses instruments made of metal and silicon. The other uses awareness as both the laboratory and the measuring device. What if both approaches aren't competing theories, but complementary methods for mapping the same territory from different angles? Let's crack open the final technique Number 112, in the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, entering the space between breaths become the breath. Now jump to Massachusetts General Hospital, 2023. Researchers observe advanced meditators performing similar techniques. Their brain scans show something remarkable. Decreased activity in the parietal lobe, the brain region 
that creates our sense of separation from the environment. The subjective experience, boundaries dissolving. The objective measurement, the self-generating brain network going quiet. Two different investigations separated by 5,000 years, arriving at the same conclusion. Consciousness isn't just the observer of reality, it's the gateway to understanding it. The most sophisticated tool for studying consciousness might be consciousness itself, but this convergence isn't just a historical curiosity, it's a portal to possibilities that should make your hair stand on end. What if this ancient text contains insights about consciousness that modern science hasn't even conceived of yet? What if these techniques offer access to dimensions of reality our instruments are still too primitive to detect? What if we're rediscovering only the kindergarten level of what these ancient practitioners already mastered? And what if they left breadcrumbs for us to follow? The scientific community is catching on. At UCLA, Stanford, Harvard, elite researchers are now studying these ancient techniques not as cultural curiosities, but as serious scientific protocols. Neuroscientist Richard Davidson wires up Olympic-level meditators at his lab in Wisconsin. Psychiatrist Judson Brewer at Brown uses real-time neurofeedback to study the meditative states described in ancient texts. The Mind and Life Institute brings together monks and neuroscientists for unprecedented collaborations. This isn't about replacing rigorous science with mystical woo-woo, and it's not about reducing profound spiritual practices to mere brain chemistry. It's about recognizing that when two radically different approaches, separated by thousands of years and opposite methodologies, converge on the same insights, we might be looking at complementary pieces of humanity's most important puzzle, the nature of mind itself. The core claim of the Vigyan Bhairav Tantra shatters our conventional worldview. The universe exists within consciousness, not the other way around. Fast forward to today. Leading physicists like Donald Hoffman at UC Irvine propose that reality at its most fundamental level isn't made of particles or waves, but information, or dare we say, consciousness itself. John Wheeler the legendary physicist who coined the term black hole, put it bluntly, it from bit. Meaning physical reality emerges from information. Both these ancient practitioners and cutting edge physicists invite us to flip our most basic assumption. What if consciousness isn't produced by the brain, but is the fundamental ground from which reality itself emerges? So what secrets might still be encoded in this 5,000-year-old user's manual? What dimensions of experience await just beyond our current scientific paradigms? What dormant capabilities of consciousness might we activate if we approach these techniques with both rigorous scientific methodology and fearless self-exploration? The Vigyan Bhairav Tantra isn't just a historical curiosity, it's a living bridge between worlds between ancient wisdom and cutting-edge discovery, between objective measurement and subjective experience, between the mathematics of quantum fields and the direct experience of consciousness itself. Perhaps the greatest laboratories aren't built of concrete and steel, but of attention and awareness. Perhaps the most sophisticated tools for understanding consciousness aren't made of silicon and metal, but of consciousness itself. The truly mind-bending possibility isn't just what this ancient text knew before its time, but what it might still be waiting to teach us about the nature of reality and our own untapped potential. The secret was never actually hidden. It was waiting in plain sight for minds ready to grasp it. The convergence of these two ways of knowing, one ancient, one modern, isn't just an academic curiosity, it's a doorway. The question isn't whether these ancient techniques work, both subjective experience and objective measurement confirm they do. The real question is, what might you discover if you step through that doorway yourself? Are you ready to find out?